Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace and blessings be upon you. Uh, so today I wanted to discuss uh, explanation or tafsir of Surah Al-Takathur. And despite the surah not being very long at all, uh, especially this towards the Meccan surahs, uh, or this is one of uh, the Meccan surahs, and many of the Meccan surahs deal a lot with self-purification and with your nafs and making you kind of dig internally to fix your problem, figuring out God and so on. Uh, this surah talks and is named essentially the increase, al-takathur, or the desire for increase. Uh, and inshallah, I'll go in explaining each verse by verse and what I find to take as uh, a reflection from it and meaning. Um, Bismillah. So, A'udhu Billah Min Shaitan Ar-Rajim, O Allah, seek refuge in you from the curse Satan. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Allah begins this surah by saying, Al-Hakum al-Takathur. So, the desiring for increase has distracted you, right? And SubhanAllah, that is the very essence of this world. Like, going, continuing on Surah Al-Layl, right? That we're all chasing after these things or everyone's desire is to chase after different things. But even when you achieve the things that you desire, there's always more. There's always increase after that point, right? Like you want the next video game, and once you get it two, three weeks out, you're bored of it and you want the next one. You want the next distraction, right? So this, this desire for increase, I believe, comes from um, the emptiness of the creation of the human being. Where Allah says, خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانُ He has created man, and this is in Surah Al-Rahman, كَسَلْصَالٍ سَلْصَالٍ مِنْ فَخَّارٍ Like basically out of clay, like a pottery. Right? You know when you create a pottery, or like uh, any, any sort, any shape, right? On the inside it's empty. And that's one of the things that shaitan was like, I can embody this creation i can go inside of it i can corrupt it i can influence it right and as allah says what is the enjoyment of this world except right he's limiting the enjoyments of this world the enjoyments of things that are essentially vague right uh thinking you're better than others all these uh, essentially titles that we're chasing after or wealth Right, that essentially we give it value. These are things that we give value because we are the ones who cherish and chase after it, right? And the more people that chase after something, that desire creates importance, right? If nobody cared about iPhones, they wouldn't be making them, right? If nobody cared about these distractions in these entertainments and funneling them or funding them, these things would die out and no longer exist. So desires create importance, right? And subhanAllah, that very problem is what feeds this world and makes the problem even worse, right? This desire for increase is a problem of the soul wanting to find its true purpose. And we keep getting distracted by trying to fill it with emptiness. More things that we think is going to give us importance and happiness, right? Like I always say marketing commercials, right? They're never going to try to sell you something with a sad face because we all inside desire to be happy or content, right? Maybe I'll make a video about happiness and contentment and the difference, right? But like we desire to be content, but we are chasing happiness when happiness is fleeting, it's momentary, right? Contentment is constant and happiness is momentary. So like when they try to sell you these things in videos and uh, you know, uh, marketing uh, commercials, they're always trying to sell it to you with a smile and you're thinking like, oh, this is good, this is, this is going to make me happy, this is going to fill that emptiness, right? And subhanAllah, if you don't really catch yourself, you'll find yourself spending thousands on video games, thousands on merchandise and clothes, right? Uh, whether it's bags or shoes or t-shirts like i knew this guy that had no joke like 300 shirts and he showed me in his closet i'm like you literally have a shirt for every single day of the year like i i don't understand why someone's obsession like that's his joy right that's what gives his life value but when you push these things aside you find that 
your happiness is not dependent on anything external of you, you have more control, you have more izza, and izza would translate to like honor or character or dignity or strength within yourself to not be weak to anything outside of you. It's hard to break you, right? Because you're not made internally on anything that's superficial. It's like a strong pillar, right? It's not shaken or destroyed by the smallest thing from the outside, right? So despite this only saying, Al-Hakum Al-Takathur, it makes you kind of reflect upon everything and how these distractions of increase really shapes your identity, right? Hatta dhurtum al so he's saying that this distraction kind of hits you or it's going to keep hitting you until you reach your graves. Basically until you die, right? And this is why one of the sunnahs of the Prophet Sallallahu and the companions is to constantly visit graves. And this always reminds us of our destination. It kind of puts a stop on this desire for increase. Like, hey, this is my destination. Whatever I'm chasing, whatever my sa'i is, whatever I'm trying to increase now or increase last year because I've achieved it and now it's a new goal, like it doesn't matter, right? Hatta dhurtum al maqabir until you reach uh, your, essentially the grave site, which is death, right? Kalla sawfa ta'lamun. Know, but you will surely know. Know what, right? Allah swearing here. Kalla, like he's like, oh, no, 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 you're going to find out. Right? That's essentially what it's saying. It's saying no, but it's saying no in that attitude. It's like, no, no, no. You're going to find out, right? Kalla sawfa ta'lamun thumma. And then he swears again, no, you know, no. I, will, I swear that you're going to find out, right? Kalla law ta'lamun ilm al No, again, like he, he's like affirming. He's saying no, but he's like, you're in doubt. Just wait. You're going to find out that your doubt. Okay, you're, you're fighting someone and you know you could destroy this person, right? And he's saying, you're, like, you, you can't harm me. Like, yeah, okay, sure, I can't harm you. You'll see, right? You're so certain of the outcome that you're kind of making him believe his denial. That's what the no essentially means, right? But it's not really a no. I'm just saying, okay, just die. Wait, wait till you die and then you'll find out what's real or not, right? When reality hits you in the face, you're going to find out what's real or not. ثُمَّ كَلَّا سَوْفَ تَعْلَمُونَ Know again, you will surely know. كَلَّا لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ عِلْمَ الْيَقِينَ No, but if you know the knowledge of that which is certain. What is certain? That كُلُّ نَفْسٍ دَائِكَةُ الْمَوْتِ That every soul, everything, not just human beings, not animals, not the moon, the earth, the, you know, everything in existence will cease to exist and that is death. To cease to exist is death, right? كُلُّ نَفْسٍ دَائِكَةَ الْمَوْتِ or كَلَّ سَوْفَ تَعْلَمُونَ كَلَّ لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ عِلْمَ الْيَقِينَ What is that knowledge of certainty? The knowledge that you will die, right? Like I saw this, um, I was watching like a YouTube short, actually today, and it was like from this guy that I don't like, but YouTube algorithm, uh, Nas Daily, right? And his video was about this guy, like, he's alive. It's as though he, he's escaping death. It's like nobody escapes death, <laughs> right? He, death is ignoring him till it hits him in the face and he's realized that he's done nothing with his life. He's prepared nothing, right? On the day uh, in Surah Al-Fajr, uh, the people or man will say, Ya laytani qaddamtu hayati Oh Allah, he, or he's standing in front of Allah, and reality is hit him, it's the day of judgment, and he's questions about his life, and he's like, oh, I wish I did something with my life. I wish I did something to prepare for this interview in front of Allah. I wish that I did something so my scales are not against me, right? الجحيم, if you understood the knowledge of certainty, you will truly see Jahannam behind it. لَتَرَوُنَّ الْجَحِيمِ Jahim is like Jahannam. You will see Jahannam. You would prepare for it, right? So ignorance or the desire to follow the increase and be distracted by what I said earlier in the other surah is that which is, why are you chasing something that's momentary, right? You're letting something that you know is momentary distract you. Like the Prophet Sallallahu he's saying like, you're like a traveler in this world, hence the name of the channel, by the way. 
So you're like a traveler in this world. Why would you try to make this your destination? Right? Why would you go through riba and interest to try to buy a home that's going to take you 40 years to pay off? And God, if you live the 40 years, and if you live the 40 years, you know, you barely have time to enjoy it. And if your kids fight, don't fight over who takes the house after your death. SubhanAllah, like it's mata al ghurur, right? It's designed to make you chase emptiness, right? Except the smart person, he realizes there's no value in it. He rises above it. He prepares and does things that matter, which is a life that is permanent, which is the next life where we see Allah, right? And have Jannah as a reward, right? Why would you try to focus on getting a momentary job when you have the option to work for a permanent job that's, that's going to pay you off for the rest of eternity versus a job that's only going to pay you like a part-time job that will pay you for two years and then you're lost, right? Essentially, that is the life of this world compared to the next. You will surely see it with eyes of certainty, right? Going back to what I said before about you can deny it as much as you want. Like the no, the negative, like the affirmative no, right? Like wait till you die, then you'll find out the truth. He's like, you will surely see it with eyes of certainty. Like, okay, you, you're dead. You see Jahannam now, right? Because you've prepared nothing for it and that's your destination. And you're like, as much as you would like to deny it, it's not going to go away because that's reality now, right? You're faced with the real reality that you've decided to ignore in a temporary world. And then you will be asked about that which any good that you've done right what did you do with this life that allah has given you right there's blessings of eyesight and hearing and having a sound body and mind right and subhanallah never think that just because like this asks about good actions and just someone will be like you know well i did a lot of good where is my reward right the hadith mentions a man that who worshiped allah for 500 years and Allah will ask him, do you want, on the Day of Judgment, do you want to enter Jannah by my mercy or your, good de or your worship? So he says, Ya Allah, I worshipped you for 500 years. Let me enter Jannah. So Allah says, throw him, in, throw him in the hellfire. He couldn't even repay me for his eyesight, right? SubhanAllah, like such, that's one blessing that we take for granted. Like how much would a blind man, like imagine a billionaire, how much he would give up that he's never had eyesight, how much of his wealth he would give up to be able to see again, right? That's just one blessing that Allah has given you. And subhanAllah, you never know the value of something until Allah takes it away. May Allah never take any of his blessings away except that he increase us. And may he make us of those who, thankful, uh, who are thankful to him and constantly increases us. وَلَئِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you were surely or truly thankful, I would have surely increased you. May Allah make us of those who are shakirin or of those who are thankful to Him. May Allah accept from me and you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.